Good morning, good morning. Today you find me in the magnificent Mendip Hills in Somerset, where later on I'm going to do a half marathon around the famous Cheddar Gorge. Thank you. Half marathon. Half marathon. Lovely job. Thank you. The countryside is going to be beautiful and I found out some fascinating stuff to share with you. So let's go. Isn't that fantastic? That was evil. Got all tingly. Where's this dry finish? More bog. You find out what you're made of. Frying bacon. <laughs> this event is organised by Relish Running. Relish Running Races, who also did the Twin Tunnels that I did in Bath last summer. You may remember them. Three, two, one, go! So in today's run, we're going to find out about ancient history. We'll hopefully see where the UK's oldest complete skeleton, human skeleton was found. We're going to hear about Iron Age history, sorry, Bronze Age history. Got loads of Bronze Age barrows. And I'll tell you how to spot the different types, because apparently I now find out there's all sorts of different types. We're going to hear about modern history. And now, a bleak area up here was used to help protect Bristol from the Luftwaffe during the war. And of course, I couldn't come to Cheddar without talking about cheese. And there's always room for a bit of childish innuendo. That valley you can see down there is called Velvet Bottom. This route is not without its elevation. I'll show you a map in a second. But the steepest climb comes nine and a half, ten and a half miles, or the longest climb, I should say. The steepest one is Hill Steps. It comes about mile three, kilometre five. Quite a rocky descent here, but that'll be really useful practice for what's happening to me in July, which I haven't told you about yet. But I'll tell you more about that when we get to the end of the video. Here we go. So we've got a little bit along the gorge road. Thank you. No worries. Okay. This is where the steep bit starts. Because we're going from here, effectively the bottom of the gorge, to the top. Have you ever wondered whether the phrase step and steep come from the ferry at same origin? This part of the path is on the Mendip Way, which 50 mile long distance path goes all the way from Western Supermare, where we did that uh, Storm the Fort run in January, all the way to Froome in Somerset. The difference in terrain between this one and Manchester half two weeks ago is so different. It's almost like chalk and cheese. See what I did there, cheddar trees. A little bit of downhill. Stretch out those quads and calves. Behind us is where you'll find all the caves. And one of the famous ones is called Goff's Cave. And in Goff's Cave is the oldest complete human skeleton ever found. Who lived in these parts maybe 12,000 years ago. And they've done all the usual radiocarbon dating and they've also done DNA analysis and they've done a facial reconstruction two days ago on Facebook uh, a suggested post popped up where they found through DNA who they think is a living relative down here in Cheddar 300 generations later on amazing so the gorge is behind us that's Cheddar down there and that's Cheddar Reservoir. And I couldn't come here without talking about cheese, could I? Cheddar is certainly the UK's most popular cheese and America's most, second most popular. It's been made here for years and years. Here's the first checkpoint. Let's give you a quick clash of what Relish provides. This side's electrolytes, this side's water. Brilliant, thank you. 
Here we go. Quick look. Nice, eh? Thanks, Marshalls. So as we leave Cheddar Gorge behind us, my question to you is where was the river? We know that gorges are formed by water eroding soft rock, leaving harder rock. We ran at the bottom of the gorge on the road and there was no river. So where is it? I'll leave you to ponder that for a minute. I'll tell you in a little while. So let me answer that where's the river question. See, round here, you don't have rivers on the surface very much. Generally, rivers are uh, uh, underground aquifers because chalk is porous, limestone is porous, and the, the water soaks down through it until it hits a, an impermeable layer and it basically flows along on the top of that. If you think back to 20,000 years ago, there was this thing called an ice age, which meant any water that was actually in the limestone was also frozen, which meant that the limestone was no longer porous. So the water could not flow down through it, it could only sit on the surface. But in the summer months, which were warmer than the winter months, the ice and the snow that were all on the surface around here melted and they formed rivers just in the summer and then in the winter they would freeze again. In the summer they would melt and they would run down the same channels they ran down last year. And those Ice Age meltwater rivers are what caused Cheddar Gorge. Then 12,000 years ago, when the Ice Age went, the ice melted, the limestone became porous. Thank you, fella. The limestone became porous again, and the rivers went back underground. And so those rivers that formed Cheddar Gorge are now safely underground, creating more caverns somewhere else. I find that absolutely fascinating. I've known about gorges all my life, but I never knew that. And now back up again. <laughs> a pointless style for my friends on the around a thousand miles trail running group on Facebook. There's a real strong smell of garlic around here, so I'm assuming it's the wild garlic. It really does smell like I should be coming, oui, I should be coming across a pizzeria or something any minute. While I'm walking up this bit, I'll tell you about the next run that I'm doing. I realised I'd never been to Mount Snowden. So July's race is going to be the crossing a long half marathon with an ascent and descent of Snowdon. When you look at the elevation, it really is quite scary. I think there's going to be a lot of walking. Rather than being disappointed about walking up these hills, I'm telling myself this is brilliant training. Really hope you'll be able to join me for that one. Ah, fantastic. This is something I'm going to tell you about a bit later. What is it? What was it used for? is a bunker with a wall and it had a really important part to play, potential part to play in the war. The name Black Down comes from Saxon words meaning bleak den or bleak fort and you can see why and the astute amongst you will also recognise these bronze age burial mounds these bronze age barrows this is the highest point on the Mendips and the trig point is actually on top of a bronze age burial mound thanks Marshall see you later. 
So we've, in the past we've seen Iron Age barrows, which can be the long ones. And I don't know, maybe Bronze Age ones can be long as well, but it's basically where they buried people rather than dig holes in the ground. They buried them on the surface and then covered it in soil and rocks. <coughs> and they're often mass burials rather than individual graves or individual people. Now, most of the Bronze Age barrows are generally circular. They probably just look like a lump of a lump of earth in like a dome. And they basically are, but there's three distinct types. There's the bowl barrow, which is that simple dome. And there's a bell barrow, which is a dome that also has a little embankment around the edge. And then there's a disc barrow, which just is the embankment. I'll show you a picture of that. And here on Blackdown, there are nine bells, one bowl, and one disc. That's a fabulous view, isn't it? But now we've got a beautiful bit of downhill. Look at that. Majestic, eh? Now, if you were a German Luftwaffe bomber pilot wanting to bomb Bristol, you'd fly at night so you didn't get shot by anti-aircraft guns and you'd look for telltale signs, streets and lights and things. So, very sensibly, the UK practiced a blackout policy where you uh, blacked out all your lights so the German the enemy bombers couldn't see anything. They built a decoy town here on Black Down. They basically got Shepperton Film Studios to put out a whole series of lights on here that would look like a, a town that had forgotten to black out its lights. So there were street lights and things like that. There were even red lights looking like the embers of steam trains in shunting yards and they made it look like the streets of Bristol. And all of those lights were powered by a bunch of petrol generators hidden in bunkers. And that that we just saw over there, that bunker with the brick wall to protect the entrance from blasts, was one of those bunkers. I don't know if it worked or not, but I love the idea. up this hill let me just remind you of the route and now we're heading along the top there in order to go back up to the top of the Mendips and then wiggle our way back down to the finish so we're just over nine miles in now and the this part of the route joins another path called the limestone way and Limestone Way is a 36 mile, 58k footpath that links the Mendip Way that we were on to the Cotswold Way up uh, just uh, south of Bristol. So if you fancy a self-guided ultra, just come down here and follow the, the Ammonite signs which will keep you on the, the Limestone Way. We're now going to go up there and this will take us back up to the top of Blackdown. So if you're enjoying the video do give it a like, a nice little thumbs up, that helps. YouTube share it with other runners. And if you want to add a comment that's brilliant. I read all the comments and I try and reply to all of them too. I'll see you at the top.
Oh, thanks. What if they know they're standing on a 3,000 year old burial mound? Beautiful skylark up there. There we go, last checkpoint done. I stopped and just gave myself a minute there, which was nice. I had a chat with one of the runners. See if I can give her a name check later. And there's the finish, just over there. So mostly flat or downhill from here with a little bit of an uphill twist at the end, just when you're supposed to be smiling with the cameras. Let's do it, here we go. When I was doing my research and looking at the Ordnance Survey map, others are available, but that's the one I really use and rely on. I noticed there was a couple of Roman remains down here, a Roman fort and a Roman settlement. And I thought, oh, I wonder if I'll be able to see them when we get there. And then I can point them out, share more interesting stuff. But I looked on the aerial view and you really couldn't. And it made me realize that these things are excavated by archaeologists, studied, and then they recovered again to preserve them. And uh, unless I'd looked on the ordnance map, I'd never known. So let me show you that picture that I looked at. See if you can spot them. What about if I zoom in a little bit? Or maybe change the color balance slightly? Still no? Here you go, there they are. So on an aerial view, you just see the slight difference in colour. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if it's not down there. But yeah, unless you actually looked at a proper ordnance map and saw those things marked, you'd never know. Another good reason to use maps. I wonder what that is. The last marshal just said to me, final push now. And I said, well, I don't know about push. And she said, it's called a challenge for a reason. I said, oh, that's put me in my place. But she's right. If I get home in three minutes, I'm under three hours, but I don't think that's happening. Because I can see there's a beast of a hill just there. This feels very easy to turn a tight angle just here, so. It's just too tussocky for me to be comfortable running. So, the wrong way, look at that. What an idiot. So busy watching my feet, I didn't see the flags. This lady was ahead of me. Oh, well, that was quite cool. Not the whole way there. <laughs> <laughs> when it mattered. There you go. Very well done. Funny you did... commentary. Yeah. Grab yeah. loads of stuff. Hello, sir. All done. And oh, I'm very tired. The perfect challenge. It's not easy. It's hard. It's. It doesn't appear to be as hard that you don't want to do it. And then when you're in the middle of it, you find there's some sneaky little bits that make it that bit harder, which you really don't want to do, but you then feel much prouder of when you get to the other end. Another great, great organized run by Relish. Super aid stations, as I say, good challenge, some impressive views and whew, I'm now gonna have a bit of a rest. And then drive back home, three hours. Maybe have a McDonald's on the way. 
edit this video tomorrow, hopefully get it up on Monday so that people can watch it and find out the interesting stuff. Look forward to seeing you again on another run. Thanks for joining me.